in neutral. Starts good. It does, yeah. Starts right up. Let's gauge your speedometer, tachometer, clock. Somewhere I read that they set this up to look like an aircraft huh. with the uh, gauges and the throttle controls down here for the air and the blower and temperature. Air conditioning, this car has the only factory option available, air conditioning. Huh. Which was, depending on what article you read, 1,000. And the neat thing, Drew, is these vents, the air conditioning vents are on the roof. Yeah, that is cool. I think in 57 maybe, or 58, they moved them to the dash. This may be the only year that they were in the roof. Not 100% sure on that. But yeah, the AC does work. It does work. It's pretty impressive. And I think the condenser's in the trunk. Yeah, right? yeah it is. That's right. Um, Nick was telling me he's in the trunk. Power steering, power brakes. I think this is kind of cool. He's in. Oh, that is cool. always. I think this how has. You, how do you change that? Right here in the front of the. Okay. Kind of hidden. Yeah, that is. Well, well, that goes forward. Yeah. Back. Is this a tilt over here? Go forward. Back. And this one, I think, is a tilt option, which I don't think is working in your windows. These are cool, these power vent windows. That is how, cool. how slick is that? Yeah, pretty nice. <laughs> little tiny mirror. That's kind of surprising on a car like this, that little tiny rear view mirror. And the Lincoln uh, Star emblem is kind of unique. And that that was, I'm sorry, Continental. I gotta remember that Continental <laughs> was where that originated, and then Lincoln adopted it. Yeah, in like '58, is that right? Yeah. Lincoln adopted the Continental logo, and then used it thereafter. And I think they're still using it to this day. Is that right? Yes, yeah, still brand new Lincolns have mm. had that same four star. No, it drives really nice. It does drive nice. Yeah, I was reading somewhere that it said the weight and the suspension really make it sort of a, a nice driving car. It's very luxurious in that respect. Now, something really uncommon for a car in the mid 50s is how understated this car is. Yeah. Very little chrome, the short trunk deck, and the long hood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the visibility is excellent. When they marketed this car, um, it debuted in, of all places, in Paris, France. It didn't debut here in the United States. I think it's October of 1955, and then later debuted it in uh, Michigan at the Ford Ford plant, I guess. But it was a car that the movie stars loved. I know, well, and Elvis Presley had one, and Frank Sinatra, Sinatra. And, and then I'd read where Warner Brothers gifted one to Elizabeth Taylor and had it mm. painted in a deep blue to match her eyes. Huh. So I thought that was a pretty cool story. That is pretty cool. Who's Elizabeth Taylor? I, don't, I actually don't know who that Who's is. Who's Elizabeth Taylor? Oh my gosh. Now I'm feeling old. Never, well, I guess, I don't know, it just doesn't ring any bells, but. I'm well, not she was her. an actress, um, starred in a lot of movies. Um, you know, it's kind of surprising. Elvis was such a Cadillac guy that he had. He had a Ford. Had a Ford, had a Continental, and he also had a Lehman Peterson limousine, Lincoln limousine, so. He wasn't 100% Cadillac guy. Ooh, I like the horn. I just can't get over how nice this car drives. Yeah. Really. It is nice. Really smooth, and for a 5,000 pound car, it, it really moves. has pretty good pickup. I think it has, did it drew the same engine as the 1956 Lincolns? They just put the same engine in it? Yeah, I think so. And it was, um, this has, what, 285 horsepower? 
Yeah. And you, it was 1957. It actually had or 300 horsepower. Yeah, they changed the compression a little bit, I guess, to increase the horsepower. Well, the story of this car kind of dates back to 1939 when Edsel Ford, who was the president of Ford Motor Company, the son of Henry Ford, won a, uh, his own private luxury car. And so he commissioned this, what would become the Lincoln Continental. Um, it was so, it was such a hit. In fact, Frank Lloyd Wright, the famous architect, yeah. called it the most beautiful car in history. And wow. he liked it so much, he bought two of them. But uh, I guess that's what Ford took it down to his vacation home, and it was such a hit down there that he called back to the Ford Motor Company and said, I could sell a thousand of these tomorrow if I had them. Yeah. So they started making the car, and and uh, uh, then World War II broke out, and all automotive uh, vehicles stopped production. And when it resumed in 1945 or 46, whenever that was, the Continental was pretty much unchanged until 1948 when uh, just financially couldn't couldn't make it. And then uh, about 19, early 1950s, the Ford dealers were calling out. They wanted a, a uh, Lincoln Continental again to help bring customers into their dealerships. And and uh, so Ford at that time was more profitable and could come out with this. And Edsel Ford's son, William Clay Ford Sr., was actually the one, 28 years of age, put in charge of the new Continental Division. Mm. I thought that was pretty cool. So, 28 years old and having such a big uh, responsibility. But, uh, even has a trademark Continental hump on the back, which was the hallmark of the 1939 prototype for the tire. The tire, yeah. And this car actually is functional. In the modern day Continentals, it's cosmetic. covers where that is. That tire just looks like it almost could be original. Yeah, I agree. I gotta show them where the gas cap yeah, is. Yeah, the gas cap, that's good. How cool is this? A hidden gas cap. That is pretty cool. This wire is kind of in the way, but I guess you can get the cap off of there okay. I kind of like the 50s Cadillacs with a tail light opened up on the fin. There's the ductwork for the air conditioner. Well, that's the. Uh, check to see how much Freon. And it was very conservative in the way it was styled. Everything was pretty much coming out with a lot of chrome on it at the time, so. Something I was noticing yesterday is this hood ornament. It doesn't have a spring on it. You no, know, today's cars, or the newer cars, have a spring, so if they got bumped, they wouldn't break off. That would be very easy to pop that off. I'm surprised that's survived all these years. has an electric wiper motor on it now, but so I'm this wondering is a, if at one time it had a vacuum. 368 cubic inch engine. Right. 285 horsepower. 300 for the year after this one. 57. I believe these Lincoln engines were uh, the Continental Company pulled Lincoln engines off the assembly line that they felt were the best ones and went through them, tuned them, and then put these Continental aluminum valve covers on to make it more Continental specific. But apparently these engines were all gone through uh, a lot more in detail than the Lincoln cars were. I read somewhere, Drew, that this hood ornament actually costs more to make than the grill. Really? It took so much. They actually were commissioned that with a military company to make that. It cost more than the actual whole grill did. This is all metal, chrome, finished. That's odd, though. It's such a small piece of metal. I know. And then this is such a big piece of metal. You would think it would a lot less but it's pretty thin I could see where it'd be 
just hard to make. intricate design work. Yeah. I think this chassis was designed where after the front wheels it dipped down and came back up to give the car a more lower overall stance, but still left the seats where they were chair height. So it made it really comfortable. When you're sitting, you know, you felt, you didn't feel like you're down in a hole. You felt, yeah, yeah. You felt very upright. These door handles are pretty cool. Ooh. comes up form a good seal on the lip up there look at the seat belt <laughs> goes in like this and then you got to put it in neutral is that right? yeah two-tone black and white yeah that's really nice you no know, continental actually uh, imported their leather uh, from scotland scottish bridge aware i think they call their bridge aware however you pronounce it and the reason they did that is because apparently they don't use barbed wire over there so the cattle didn't get punctures in their hides oh okay so it was better quality leather Dumb. oh yeah Being that it weighs Not 500 too bad. or 5,100 pounds, it's uh, it does pick up pretty fast. Well, for 60 plus years old, this air conditioning is still blowing out ice cold. Yeah, As brakes town. work well too. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. When you stomp on it, it really stops quick. Probably no Brembo brakes on this. No, probably <laughs> not. This glove box is kind of unique. It's like a tray within the box yeah keep stuff from falling out but none of the token little cup holders that were on some of those 50s lids which i never quite understood because it wouldn't hold the cup you could just set it there but these ashtray oh it is an ashtray i guess you could smoke back then <laughs> I think everyone smoked back then. Yeah, they did. Today we just take for granted all this stuff. But yeah. back then, boy, that was... That was high class. That was. And this was the most expensive car at the time. It was $10,000 at a time when the average car was only $1,900. So the average consumer and even above average consumer couldn't afford this car. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, the competition to this car was the Cadillac Eldorado Brome that came out in 1957. A lot of people thought the Cadillac came out with that car specifically as competition to this car, but when you think about it, it took three to four years once the car was envisioned to actually hit the production line. Cadillac was already in the works at the same time this car was. Hmm. Um, Cadillac Brome was a four-door car, this being a two-door car. Cadillac had more bling to it, kind of like the 50s stuff with the stainless steel roof. And, yeah. But also, <laughs> also had a $13,000 price tag, so it didn't sell well either. Huh. But both Lincoln, I'm sorry, Continental, <laughs> I'm going to do that. Both Continental and Cadillac didn't really intend the cars to sell well. They just wanted to bring people into their dealerships. So this car is technically not a Lincoln, it is a Ford Continental, and it was under Ford's Continental division, right? Right, and Ford Continental actually not be correct either, just Continental. Same with the Edsel that came out after this car went under. <laughs> kind of the funny story is that the division that then took over the Continental division was the Edsel division. And as we all know, that only lasted a couple yeah, years before yeah. it, it failed too. But I always got, I owned an Edsel for a while. I always got corrected. It's not a Ford Edsel, it's an Edsel. Edsel's a division of Ford Motor Company. Yes, this would be right. a Continental, a division of Ford. And this was really comparable to the Rolls Royce of England at the time, right? Right. So the most expensive cars you could get were either a Rolls Royce or just a 
Continental. So. Yeah, I think the Continental actually sold for more money than the Rolls Royce really? did. Yeah, that's that's what that's, I read too. I wouldn't mind pulling up to one of these in my driveway back in the 50s or even today. You'll fit back there a lot better than I would. It is pretty comfortable. It's got nice seats back here. It's got a folding armrest there too. Oh, it is. Yes. Wow. But no armrest in the front. Just the one on the. Just the one on the armrest. Armrest or on the door. Mm -hmm.